The next item of business is a statement by Hamza Yousaf on home detention curfew, HMIPS and HMICS independent review. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Hamza Yousaf for up to 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, uh, Deputy Prading Officer. I would like to begin uh, by expressing my sin sincere condolences to Craig McClellan's family. I, I met with them again this morning to discuss these reports and how the government will respond. And it's clear from our conversations that Craig was a much loved son, a much loved brother, partner, and most of all, dad to his three boys. Uh, Craig was a, a remarkable young man. Through speaking to his family, I've heard much more about him. I heard stories of Craig's selflessness, uh, how he would intervene if somebody was in danger without giving consideration to himself. But what touched me the most, uh, perhaps, was how Craig's life completely revolved around his family and friends, uh, and especially Stacey and his three boys. I would like to commend his family, Craig's family, for their bravery and also, of course, their tenacity in highlighting their concerns about the circumstances of Craig's death. I am absolutely determined that lessons will be learned uh, and, what, and that improvements will be made to home detention curfew to ensure that public, uh, public safety remains absolutely paramount. In June, my predecessor instructed HMIPS and HMICS to undertake independent reviews of HTC. Uh, those reports have been laid in Parliament today. I met with the two chief inspectors yesterday, and I would like to thank them and their teams for undertaking these reviews. I also met with the chief executive of the Scottish Prison Service and with the chief constable this week to seek assurances that the inspectorate's findings will be addressed as a priority. Presiding officer, I will discuss the inspectorate's findings and the action being taken in response in just a moment. Uh, before I do, I'd like to provide some context, and overall context of HDC. Home detention curfew is an established mechanism for preparing prisoners for release. It is not available to all prisoners and is not an entitlement. Prisoners are only eligible following risk assessment and provided that they are not subject to statutory exclusions. At any time, there are around 300 people on HTC. This is approximately 4% of the prison population and is comparable to its use in England and Wales. Since it was introduced in 2006, over 20,000 people have been released under HTC. The vast majority, 80%, successfully complete their period of HTC. Of those who are recalled, the vast majority are returned promptly to custody. However, I am clear that HDC needs to be strengthened in light of the inspectorate's findings. The inspectorate's reviews examine the process for assessing whether someone should be placed on HDC and for investigating breaches and apprehending individuals following recall. The reviews also examined whether processes were followed in the case of James Wright, who was convicted of Craig's murder. In this specific case, the inspector has found that the application process and decisions to release were in line with existing policies and guidance. However, there were some oversights. They were clear that the assessment process should be improved. The inspector has found that once the recall order for James Wright was issued, police delivered the necessary briefings and updated their systems appropriately. However, they noted that there was a lack of a documented approach and effective oversight in the efforts to apprehend James Wright. It is clear, therefore, that improvements are absolutely needed, and I intend to take immediate action. Presiding officer, I'd like to make clear at the outset that SPS, Police Scotland, and indeed the Scottish Government will accept all of the inspectorate's recommendations. The Chief Executive of the Prison Service and the Chief Constable have given me assurances that, in addition to actions already taken, work to implement the recommendations being, are being taken forward uh, as a top priority. It is not possible uh, in the time allotted, presiding officer, to discuss all of the recommendations in detail today. I will, however, highlight the main findings common to both reports and set out the immediate actions being taken to address them. In terms of the, the, the risk assessment, both reviews were clear that the risk assessment process should be strengthened to make decision-making procedures more robust. 
Specifically, the inspectorates recommend that there should be greater consideration of the potential risk an individual may pose to the community, uh, improved access to police intelligence to inform decisions, improved support and guidance for staff undertaking assessments, and crucially, a presumption of refusal of home detention curfew where the individual's offence involves certain prior behaviours. In response, the following additional safeguards are being implemented. There will be a presumption that individuals whose offence involves violence or knife crime will not, in normal circumstances, receive home detention curfew. And we will consider the option of placing this on a statutory basis. We will also look at exclusions for individuals who have known links to serious and organised crime. Police intelligence is now being shared to inform decisions about HDC release and SPS are adding an additional level of assurance to the HDC assessment process. Uh, governors in charge will now receive recommendations and will decide on HDC release applying consistent criteria. Alongside this, SPS and partners will review the assessment criteria for HDC and will make any necessary wider improvements. In relation to the governance uh, and, and procedure, the inspectorates also identified that improvements were needed to ensure greater consistency in HDC processes and to strengthen governance. In response, SPS and Police Scotland are improving the consistency of documentation related, relating to HDC as a priority. Police Scotland has also taken action to strengthen the governance of activity to apprehend individuals who are unlawfully at large. These individuals are now discussed at each local area commander's daily tactical briefing, ensuring clear tasking and supervision arrangements are in place. Planning officer, both inspectorates highlighted shortcomings in the information sharing processes between SPS and Police Scotland in relation to HDC, particularly the status of those who are unlawfully at large. Police Scotland and SPS have already undertaken urgent work to rectify this. In June, they established a working group to review and improve their information sharing and communication processes in relation to HDC. As, as a result, they, have now, they now have clear communication processes in place so that, individuals, so that information on individuals released on HDC and those subject to recall notices is shared and acted on in real time. This means that efforts can be focused on identifying and apprehending individuals who are unlawfully at large. Consequently, the number of individuals who are unlawfully at large from HTC has decreased from 54 on the 18th of June to eight as of this morning. The inspectorates found that cross-border arrangements where individuals are released to addresses in England and Wales should be a lot clearer, particularly in relation to notification on release and revocation of HTC licenses. SPS and Police Scotland have already taken action on this. They have established single points of contact in all 43 police forces in England and Wales and have developed clear processes to alert those forces in HMPPS to release on HDC to a curfew address in their area and any revocation of those licences. As a further safeguard, Police Scotland are also informed and confirmed that the relevant information is logged on the police national computer. Presiding officer, as part of their review, HMICS ex examined the powers available to Police Scotland to apprehend individuals who remain unlawfully at large. Consequently, they have recommended that government considers making remaining unlawfully at large a specific offence. This would also provide associated powers of entry for the police. I accept this recommendation and will consult with criminal justice partners and of course those across the chamber on the best way forward. Uh, if they agree with this proposal, uh, this will be taken forward by way of a stage two amendment to the current management of offenders bill scheduled for spring 2019. Presiding officer, I believe that these additional safeguards will strengthen HDC processes in the immediate term by delivering more robust and consistent assessment, improved governance and oversight of release decisions uh, and in relation to apprehension streamline communication between SPS and Police Scotland and clearer cross-border arrangements. <clears throat> These immediate actions form part of a wider programme of work 
to implement all the inspectorate's recommendations. I have made clear to the Chief Executive of SPS and the Chief Constable that I expect to see real and demonstrable progress, and I have made it clear to them that the Scottish Government will, of course, do likewise. Police Scotland and the Prison Service have established a senior strategic oversight group to drive forward this work. The group involves and includes representation from other criminal justice partners uh, and indeed the Scottish Government and will report on their progress directly to the Chief Constable and the Chief Executive of SPS. I've asked the Chair of the SPA to maintain oversight of Police Scotland's activity to implement the recommendations for the police. And I've also asked HMIPS and HMICS to review progress against their own recommendations in six months. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, I believe that the immediate actions I've set out today, uh, along with the work SPS and Police Scotland are undertaking, will make HDC processes more robust and will help to strike a balance between support for reintegration and the requirement to protect public safety. I'd like to close by reiterating my thanks to Craig McClellan's family for their determination in raising their concerns about the operation of HDC. It is through their tenacity, their tireless campaigning on behalf of Craig that we have got to this point. I want to thank them sincerely for their efforts as their campaigning means we will have a stronger, more robust HDC regime. Ensuring the voices of victims and their families are heard throughout the justice system is a top priority for me and this government. I will continue to keep, keep Craig's family and this parliament updated on progress. The Cabinet Secretary will uh, now take questions on the issues raised. I intend to allow around 20 minutes and then we'll move on. Uh, would those who wish to ask a question press the request to speak buttons, please? Uh, we're already over time, so I would ask you to bear brevity in mind. And the first question to Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Can I too praise the family of Craig McClellan for their bravery and determination in pursuing this matter? But ultimately, this has been a catastrophic failure of the justice system to protect the public. The McClellan family and the public will be rightly asking why on earth tragedy had to strike in order for the SNP government to investigate and ultimately make these changes. For example, and I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will agree, it beggars belief that the prison service and the police were not already sharing information on offenders unlawfully at large. Now, firstly, he boasts that 80% on those of those on HDCs complete them. That is a failure rate of one in five. So I ask, first of all, is the Cabinet Secretary really happy with that failure rate? And secondly, this Cabinet Secretary has pledged to strengthen victims' rights, but there is not a single recommendation in here to do that. He knows well the Michelle's Law campaign demands, but there is no commitment to any of those in this statement. And I ask simply why, and ask perhaps that he put those commitments in. And finally, there were concerns raised in June that the police do not have the necessary powers to force entry to property in cases of breach of HDC or entry to property when criminals are unlawfully at large. So why is there nothing in this statement addressing those concerns? And what will the Cabinet Secretary be doing to address this? Thank you. Hamza, you said. Can I thank um, Liam Kerr for uh, his questions? Uh, to answer his question directly, no, of course I'm not happy that 80% uh, uh, complete and only 80%. I just think the context of that uh, is hugely important. Uh, yes, I think there's some uh, reflection to be done around those 20%. Should we be putting targets on to reduce that 20%, I think is a, a sensible uh, suggestion. And let me reflect uh, on that suggestion. So no, I, I'm not happy, but at the same time, looking and delving deeper into those 20%, the vast majority of those who, who don't complete their HDC uh, are recalled back, or indeed their technical breaches for not being at the right place uh, at the right time. They do not, the majority of those 20% do not go on to commit grave and serious crimes uh, while uh, uh, unlawfully at large. But that is no comfort at all to the McClellan family, and that is completely understandable. So I think his point is, 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 is well made, and, and, and I just say very clearly, no, I'm, I'm not happy at that, but the context is important. He asked me about Michelle's law. Can, can I um, maybe just go back to him to say that I find often um, that, that Liam Kerr might do this, and it may well be inadvertent, but he is confusing and conflating two separate issues. Michelle's law uh, is largely to do with parole, the issues around parole, and then what happens uh, thereafter in relation to release uh, on licence. The issue we are focusing on today is home detention curfew, so why would I make a statement about parole during a statement on home detention curfew. I'm, I'm not convinced, but I'm, I'm happy to take that offline. Um, but to give you some comfort on, on, on the Michelle's Law campaign, when I've met with the Stuart family and indeed with Liam Kerr on this, 
I have sympathy for every single one of their three major asks. And as part of the review and parole, which the First Minister agreed to uh, during the programme for government, we will uh, explore every single one of their, their asks. Some of them I don't think need legislation, uh, but some of them may well do. So I can commit to, to, to that. Um, in terms of uh, my statement, I did address the, the, the issues around power, power of entry. I'm sorry if it wasn't clear enough, but I'll, I'll reiterate it, which was that one of the recommendations from the inspectorate was making going unlawfully at large an offence. If we do that through perhaps a stage two amendment, uh, the Management of Offenders Bill, that will give police the powers of entry that they require. And that is something that the family raised with me this morning and I'm happy to commit to. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I too thank Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of the statement. But I'd also like to offer my sincere condolences to the family of Craig McClelland. I know that these reports will answer some of the questions they have about Craig's murder. But I do hope that the government will commit to doing whatever it takes to go beyond these reports to answer the remaining questions that the family will have. Because let's be clear, this is a murder that is, that is not one that just shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have been possible. These reports detail multiple failings. There are clear recommendations for both the prison service and the police. So I would begin by welcoming and that we will back the government's commitment to give additional powers to the police to deal with those who have breached home uh, detention curfews, uh, which we indeed called for this summer. But the timeline of events leading to Craig's murder show that while the SPS had revoked the home detention curfew on the 24th of February, it took until the 4th of May until an address check was carried out by the police. That is truly shocking. Does the Cabinet Secretary accept that when HDCs are revoked, the police must treat this with the priority it deserves and have the resources to match? But more importantly, the, the Cabinet Secretary's remarks point to interagency uh, working and process. My concern is that the multiple failings detailed here point to much larger and widespread issues within the agencies themselves. They point to competence and capacity, capacity issues of those agencies, not just how they work together. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with that? And given all the failings that were detailed in these reports, and indeed the 24 people who've remained at large for more than four years, why has it taken a tragic murder for the government to investigate the issues that have been revealed? I'm sorry, you, sir. Can I thank Daniel Johnson for his questions? I'll try to go through as many of them uh, as I possibly can. Uh, in relation to the, 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 the family's request for more answers, uh, more, more, more questions to be answered, I met with them uh, this morning. We had a lengthy uh, meeting, understandably so, for the McClellan family. Most of their questions surrounded uh, Craig's uh, tra tragic murder. Uh, what I said to them was uh, that they should reflect on the reports uh, that will be published at 12.30. Uh, and if they would like a further follow-up meeting with me, uh, then they are most welcome to, 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 to have that meeting. And I will meet with them. Uh, they will meet uh, with the police and have access to, to the police and, and also with the Scottish Prison Service uh, if, they all, if they wish. And uh, my understanding is they're meeting with, with police uh, on, on, on Monday next week uh, and then uh, something being arranged with SPS too. So uh, my door very much is open to the McLellan family to do what I can to get to the answers to the specific questions. Uh, in relation to, to, uh, to, to, to the actual incident uh, itself, uh, in some respects, Daniel Johnson is absolutely right, of course. Uh, the McClellan family told me that uh, at the time of, of Craig's murder, people would come up to them to say, oh, it's a shame Craig was in the wrong place at the wrong time. That is nonsense. Uh, uh, James Wright was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Craig had every right to go from his house to his mother's house and expect to get there absolutely safely. Uh, and so he's absolutely right that there were some failings uh, in that case. Some of them have been absolutely identified in the inspectorate's reports around documentation, governance, communication, and that is why we will uh, accept all of those recommendations, as will SPS uh, and Police Scotland. In, in relation to moving forward and, 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 and competency of organisations, that is why I have instructed after six months a review to take place on the recommendations, because I want to be absolutely assured I want to be filled with absolute confidence that these recommendations are being acted on. And I've seen that through the Short Life Working Group. Uh, and I look forward to seeing uh, that review in, in, in six months' time. Uh, in terms of uh, priority, I, I agree with his, his, his assessment. And, and the inspector has clearly highlighted that in both the reports. Uh, going unlawfully at large, somebody going unlawfully at large must be given greater priority. And I'm confident that the recommendations, if accepted, uh, will help, that, uh, help to move that priority further up the agenda. 
Uh, can, can I say that the opening questions and answers have taken much longer than they should, and that will penalise backbenchers. I certainly won't get all the questions in, as many as possible if people are brief, if possible. Uh, George Adam, followed by Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, President Officer. Craig McClelland was a young man who met the love of his life and had three lovely boys, dedicated to his young family and his partner Stacey, loved by all his family. He's more than the tragic story that we have before us today. Today, Craig's family and myself met with the Cabinet Secretary to discuss both reports, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for confirming that this dialogue will continue. These are tragic circumstances, and none of us can bring Craig back. But what we can do, and what the family want to know, is how we protect others from going through the same grief. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me how we can take these recommendations and ensure that no other families have to endure this heartbreak? Can he explain how we translate these recommendations into legislation and what form that might take? Hamza Youssef. Can I thank George Adam for um, accompanying the family on the many occasions uh, I know publicly that they've had to, to, to have various meetings with various public agencies and indeed uh, meetings with, with myself. I know he's been uh, a great supporter uh, of the family and, and, and to get the answers uh, that they uh, absolutely deserve. Uh, in relation to directly answering uh, his questions, I, I think I highlighted in my statement that there's a potential to, to, to bring forward in a, a stage two amendment of the Management of Offenders uh, Bill. Um, we will explore that with, with members of this chamber, of course, uh, but also with other stakeholders, if that is the most appropriate and quickest way of bringing uh, that, that, that offence uh, and, and that, that change in the legislation forward. Um, information sharing was also one of the key themes of both uh, reports, and I can confirm that the, the, the working group, the oversight group, will continue the, the work of the working group, uh, as it was to ensure that SPS and Police Scotland have continued uh, good sharing of information, but also good governance. Uh, and I think the other, and the last point I'll make is that the, the, the exclusion uh, and non-eligibility of those who are in prison for violence or indeed uh, carrying a knife and potentially for the links to serious organised crimes is something that we will take forward uh, very much uh, as quickly as we possibly can. I think practically that can be done uh, relatively quickly as a presumption and hopefully relatively quickly on a statutory basis too. Margaret Mitchell, followed by Neil Bibby. Thank you. The review says that the assessment process should be improved, for example, by giving improved access to police intelligence in, to inform decision. It also highlights shortcomings in communication and information sharing between SPS and Police Scotland, particularly regarding the status of those unlaw of unlawfully at large. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm if either or both of these issues or any of its other recommendations have a direct bearing on the Chief Constable's call for the 300 million funding for what he describes as the vital new IT project to support and ensure um, that Police Scotland can get on with doing its job. Hamza, you said. Yeah, I thank Michael Mitchell. I think it's a very good question. I, I don't think it does uh, have bearing in that the police are now starting to share uh, that information, that intelligence very closely now with SPS. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a block because of the IT. Uh, that doesn't seem to be a stumbling block, if that's her direct question, but when I was in front of her committee, of course, I did say that I understood the importance of uh, the ICT proposal from Police Scotland, and sympathetic, but it will undoubtedly come down to questions of affordability, but on her specific question, no, I don't think it has a bearing uh, on that, certainly not from what I've seen, uh, and the police tell me they can, they can act on those recommendations and act on those uh, relatively quickly. Neil Bibby, followed by John Finney. The murder of Craig McClelland has shocked and horrified my community. Having met with Craig's family and spoken uh, with his father earlier today, it's impossible not to be moved by their strength, their dignity or their determination to get the answers they deserve. Like the Cabinet Secretary, Craig's father told me that someone said his son was in the wrong place at the wrong time, yet he had every right to be there in his own community. The man convicted of his murder did not. I welcome these reports, but it's clear for the family there are still many unanswered questions. Why was locating this offender not a priority? Why was this murder assessed to be low risk? Why has the system so dramatically failed? To be absolutely clear, will the Justice Secretary give a public commitment today to work with the family to find the answers they need and the truth they seek? I'm sorry, you said. Very simply, yes, I, I will, and I gave that commitment uh, to the family. I'm more than happy to speak, of course, to Neil Bibby uh, as well, uh, if he wishes about some of the actions that will take forward. What I've asked the family to do is take away the reports. They are, as you can imagine, lengthy uh, reports. I'm sure he, 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 he's seen them. Uh, to digest those reports, 
uh, and to come back to me if they want to have further meetings with me. Equally, they're having meetings with the police uh, and meetings with, I understand, uh, the Scottish Prison Service uh, as well. So there may well be uh, many uh, questions that they still feel need answered. I'm more than happy to work with the family to do my best to get them. In terms of the risk assessment that he mentions, uh, that is a key theme right throughout both reports. Uh, the fact that the risk assessment should give higher priority to whether or not public safety could be compromised uh, or affected by, by somebody going on HTC uh, is a very welcome report, uh, recommendation, I should say, in the reports, uh, one that uh, all of us, all the partners, uh, but particularly, of course, in this case, SPS, will take forward immediately. John Finney, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for very sight of the report. And the thoughts, of course, are with Craig's family and friends. A precautionary principle should apply, Cabinet Secretary, and had it, we wouldn't have this failing. I welcome your uh, making uh, remaining unlawfully at large a specific offence. Um, and there are complexities about that because, of course, the report talks about people at large out with our jurisdiction. But within this jurisdiction, can you give an assurance that when bringing forward that amendment at stage two, you will not intend granting the power of arrest or the power of entry to any private company which may be monitoring the home detention scheme? Please. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, I, I'm in the same vein of thinking as, as John Finney, but clearly bringing forward uh, legislation, be it through uh, a stage two amendment or otherwise, it will give us the opportunity to discuss these issues at great detail, at uh, great length. But I have to say my, my, my gut uh, certainly is, is, is in the same place uh, as, as John Finney's here. Making it a, an offence within legislation uh, should mean that it should be the police that are apprehending, arresting, or indeed having the power of entry uh, when, when, when somebody goes unlawfully at large. Liam MacArthur, followed by Ruth McGuire. Can I too thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement and on behalf of the Scottish Liberal Democrats uh, pay tribute to Craig McClellan's uh, family for their determination that their tragic loss should lead to improvements in our system of HTC. The inspector its reports highlight the failures of HTC and the extent to which those illegally at large were off the radar of police and the prison service. In that context, can the Cabinet Secretary outline the specific steps being taken to address what appears to be a patchwork of IT systems operated by the police and prison services that does appear to have contributed to this shocking and needless tragedy? Hamza Youssef. I would say to, to, to Lee MacArthur, similar to, to my answer to Margaret Mitchell's questions, is, is that it doesn't make it clear that the necessary IT was, was the issue, but basic information uh, should, should be shared uh, and I think will contribute to making our HDC system and processes more robust. Uh, where there is an IT block to that, then yes, of course, that discussion needs to take place. That I've mentioned already uh, my, my understanding of, of the proposals from Police Scotland to improve their ICT systems. But in this case, uh, sharing information, even at a most basic level, uh, could strengthen and would strengthen the HTC system, uh, the pro uh, HTC regime. But that does not require, uh, I don't think, an upgrade in, in IT systems, uh, unless I'm told otherwise, uh, by SPS or indeed uh, by Police Scotland. But if that is the case, then of course I will have those discussions with my partner agencies. Ruth McGuire, followed by Morris Corey. Officer, the Scottish Government and indeed the Cabinet Secretary have committed to developing a victim-centred approach across the criminal justice system. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how changes being proposed to the home detention curfew fit in with this very important commitment? Hamza Youssef. I thank Ruth Maguire uh, for that. Uh, in my discussions with Craig McClellan's family uh, this morning, I mentioned the victims uh, task force which I will set up and I've importantly said that victims and the families of victims input into that task force will be incredibly important and, and, and I've invited them, uh, the McClellan family, to send representatives as part uh, of that discussion. Uh, and I think uh, what we're doing on, on, on HDC is absolutely vital and important uh, to that work, but equally the McClellan family mentioned to me what they thought uh, were, were, were a number of gaps within the entire criminal justice system from the moment that terrible tragic, tragedy happened to, to, to even uh, uh, more, more recently than that. Uh, and I think we owe it to the victims to make sure that their rights are absolutely strengthened. Uh, and of course, the Victims Task Force will, will absolutely be a part of that. And, and I go back to my, my question, uh, my answer, sorry, to, to Neil Bibby's question, that the risk assessment process will also be uh, really, really important in this sense for the victim, because it will be around public safety being given a greater emphasis uh, within that risk assessment process, hopefully uh, giving the public uh, more reassurance and more confidence on HTC. Uh, the last question goes to Maurice Corey. Secretary, commit today to supporting an amendment to the Management of Offenders Bill to make breaching a tagging order an automatic offence, as indeed the Scottish Women's Aid 
have called for recently. Hamza Youssef. Uh, yes, I think I've, I've answered that in, in a couple of ways in my statement, but, but also uh, from, from questions uh, from others. Uh, I'm more than happy to, to look at that as a proposal. Uh, I will consider that with members of the chamber here, but also consider it with stakeholder organisations like uh, Scottish Women's Aid and, and many others. But I'm more than happy to, to listen to Maurice Corrie's uh, uh, suggestions and feedback and other members' feedback uh, on that suggestion, whatever is the quickest way and the most appropriate way to bring um, an offence of going unlawfully at large forward, uh, I will do that. I'm sorry I've been unable to call Jackie Bailey, Willie Coffey, Rona Mackay and John Mason, but we must close questions in this statement and move on to the next item of business.